What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, street samurai of all ages, Joker back again, once again. So here we are, like I said, back again, once again, now and then again. And today, today ladies and gents, we're going to be talking about cyberpunk. So what is cyberpunk? Are just Rob the one. The, the decals are like, we're here! Yeah, the decals are giant flags. So um, and, those. and James, you know that the decals are on there because someone at the Psytrans HQ basically crunched some numbers and figured out that the money they get from the advertising is greater than the money they lose from both the lawsuits and the lost product. Um, so, clearly, it's a much better decision to add the banners to have required delivery banner. Now that's the tabletop game. For this video, we're going to be covering the genre of Cyberpunk, not Cyberpunk 2077 or the tabletop game that it's based on Cyberpunk 2020 and 2013. But, before you click out of this video, remember we will be covering those eventually. I just wanted to sort of dive into what Cyberpunk was thematically, maybe philosophically, and historically before we transverse specific systems and worlds. There is a quote that I always like to go back to when trying to explain Cyberpunk to people, because they often don't understand what the difference between something like transhumanism and cyberpunk is. Transhumanism is about how technology will eventually help us overcome problems that have, up till now, been endemic of human nature. Cyberpunk is about how technology won't. See, transhumanism is an idealistic interpretation of how various technologies will help us move beyond disease, scarcity, and intrinsic human limitations, speed, strength, stamina, intelligence, longevity. Cyberpunk says, yeah, that's cool, but humans are intrinsically hedonistic assholes, and we will always use tools and technology not for the betterment of society, but to our own detriment as a civilization. Transhumanism is then a utopian ideal that removes the human condition from the equation, where cyberpunk is a more nihilistic ideal that embraces the human condition for better or for worse, and says, life sucks, might as well all drink, do drugs, and have lots of sex, and get robot arms. Yes, definitely get robot arms. Preferably the ones with the mantis rippers, or shootable katanas. Both often represent extremes, not actualities. Transhumanism is the idea of what could be, where cyberpunk is more often than not a cautionary tale that tries to teach us something. Cyberpunk fiction tends to borrow heavily from film noir, neo-noir, hard-boiled detective fiction, and deconstruction. Often set in a dark, paranoid, dystopian future 20 to 50 years down the road from now. This dark, paranoid, dystopian future is filled with crime, injustice, industrial ghettos, cultural nihilism, bleeding edge technology, chrome, leather, bad weather, and all the Chinese you could ever want. Three, four. That's a you this yo. No, four, two, two, four. That's a you this yo. And noodles. That's a yo. It's a cynical look on the future of humanity where technology has outpaced morality. To quote Jurassic Park, You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it, and packaged it, and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now you're selling it. You want to sell it. Well, I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. The negative effects, more so the abuses of technology, feature heavily in cyberpunk. Jacking into the Matrix, for example, and escaping reality is tantamount to a drug addiction, not your Friday night gaming session. Every augmented person is capable of flipping their shit at any time and killing dozens upon dozens of people. The surveillance state is an actualization, only it's not the governments, it's the corporations. Everything from entities like Facebook and Google monitor every move you make so that they can sell that data to the highest bidder in order to, what, advertise to you? Because the goal is an overly stimulated and docile population. Speaking of which, all the conspiracy theories are true. The government is out to get you. The cops are out to get you. The corporations and seemingly the old lady down the street, definitely the old lady down the street, are out to get you. The Illuminati is real. They do control everything. 
They are putting chemicals in the water to turn the frogs gay, the news is fake, and every civil injustice is in fact their means at keeping the population at odds with itself. So that they can, the people in power, use it to advance technology and lawlessness and moral decay in a society so that they can grab ever increasing levels of power telling you that it's for your safety and you'll be willing to give it up. Bullets usually are the best way to solve a problem and people, good, bad, indifferent, if that's even a moral classification that can be used, tend to die horribly painful deaths. Everything and everyone is disposable, especially you. And if you don't think you are, you're probably moments away from an extremely painful death, likely from a katana, embedded in some dude's robotic forearm. Cyberpunk is an extremely nihilistic, honest look at the hedonistic technological moral degradation of society, where the only right is pleasure and the only wrong is pain. Take that, wrap it in chrome and leather for texture, add a rule that it doesn't really have to make sense what you do, just as long as you look cool doing it, and above all else, remember, the street finds its own uses for things. And you're roughly in the neighborhood of what cyberpunk is. Cyberpunk is all of that, but it's dirty, it's grimy, it's unpalpable. It's sex and sexuality, it's drugs and it's excess, it's vice and it's violence, it's crime and it's criminality. It's the cheapness of human life, of the human body, of the mind. It's body horror. It's the invasion of the industrial into the organic. Not in a way that mirrors harmony, but in a way that is abjectly grotesque and out of place. A juxtaposition of the natural and unnatural. And this playground of the debaucherous and hedonistic allows us to explore deep philosophical questions about the nature of humanity, of suffering, of depression, of the meaning of life and existence. It supposes that morality is gray. It says that finding God in the Bible, or a church, or a mosque, or a synagogue, is often the same thing as finding God at the bottom of a bottle of vodka, or in a bed full of prostitutes. It says that these are equally valid, and oftentimes the same thing, as it's a means for comfort in a world that doesn't give a shit. Cyberpunk often explores things like, in a world where computers can be implanted into one's brain with optional false memories, capable of overriding cognitive and neurological functions, what does identity mean? What does it mean to be an individual? Cyberpunk then takes these concepts, the concept of individuality, of authenticity, of punk, and it sells it back to the masses. People want to be hippies, but they don't want to give up their iPhone and social media because they've been sold a lifestyle to replace a system of beliefs. And Cyberpunk says that lifestyle and that system of beliefs, they're both equally viable just as long as somebody can profit off it. It's the sort of world where apathy is won out. And there's not generally a happy ending. The world isn't going to change. The best you can hope for is to escape long enough to break even or make enough money to not be burdened by the troubles of everyday society. There are predators, and there are prey. Kinda depressing! Yeah, I know, I did mention that most cyberpunk literature tends to be cautionary tales, right? On top of all of that, cyberpunk likes to explore things like Frankenstein's monster. This is actually a core mechanic of the cyberpunk 2013 and 2020 tabletop games, where a stat known as humanity can be chipped away at based solely on the number of augmentations one takes. Too many augmentations and you become a cyber psycho and the cyber psycho squad is called in to put your ass down. Other times, cyberpunk plays with the idea of what does it even mean to be alive? When AI reaches the singularity or humans become increasingly mechanical or memories can be manufactured and replaced and sold like a commodity, when the experience is no longer required to have the prerequisite experience. What does human life even mean? When does a human become non-human? And when does a non-human become human? Cyberpunk explores the tension and unease between these various groups. Often, however, with the error that it treats these conflicts more like racism and classism, and less like the fear associated with the danger of somebody who has katanas in their forearms or a machine gun for a penis, or the actuality that something potentially better than humanity has achieved consciousness and is judging us for being a lesser being. But hey, nothing's perfect. The heroes of cyberpunk literature are often as jaded and cynical as the world they inhabit. 5 for 3, 2, 1. 
These heroes, although more aptly described as anti-heroes, are often your computer hackers, your criminals, your outcasts, your visionaries, your dissenters and misfits. In some cases, they're even the corporate foot soldiers or the disillusioned cop who have either been betrayed by the status quo or have been given reason to betray it. On the flip side, the majority of villains tend to be the authoritarian police state, often run by multinational corporations led by an elite who are part of the Illuminati. On top of owning the police force, they also own paramilitary mercenaries and the aforementioned highly trained agents who often specialize in assassinations and corporate espionage. And they are as corrupt as I come. Did I mention corruption? Because basically, they're the man. The powers that be. The ones that would take all the liberties and freedoms you hold dear and sell them to the highest bidder. Nothing, and I mean absolutely positively nothing, is beyond the pale for them. And oftentimes, the shithole world that everybody inhabits is a direct result of once again, to quote Jurassic Park, Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they didn't stop to think if they should. These people often topple governments and enact civil wars out of boredom. And when you kill one, five more take their place. And in the ensuing power vacuum, the world is made even shittier. I did mention cyberpunk as a genre tends to be centered around cautionary tales, right? So a little history about cyberpunk. Now, most people agree that cyberpunk comes out of the 80s, with the first real genre's hit piece being William Gibson's Neuromancer. The genre is a product of everything that happened between World War II through the early 1980s. Between 1970 and 1980, we had the Watergate scandal. We also had personal computers become more affordable and smaller, thus making their way into more people's houses and becoming more common. We also had the decline of the post-World War II industrial economic boom. And before Reagan took office, the US economy was in a rough spot. So if you combined a struggling economy with the advances of new technology and the loss in trust with our government and the rise of the punk rock genre, who had traditionally raged against the system but wasn't necessarily political until bands like The Clash, Dead Kennedys, and Bad Religion and you have the groundwork for what would become the cyberpunk genre, as most literature is framed in the world that we know. And while William Gibson's 1984 book Neuromancer would lay the thematic groundwork for what we would come to know as cyberpunk, the term cyberpunk comes from a book of the same name. Published in 1983, a short story written by Bruce Bethkel, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong because I will continue to pronounce it that way, called Cyberpunk was published in Amazing Stories. The term was picked up by Gardner Doze, editor of Isaac Asimov's science fiction magazine and popularized in his editorials. Again, sorry if I'm pronouncing that name wrong, I'm terrible with names. Beth Kay says he made two lists of words, one for technology and one for troublemakers, and experimented with combining them variously into compound words, consciously attempting to coin a term that encompassed both punk and high technology. Works like William Gibson's 1984 Neuromancer and Ridley Scott's 1982 Blade Runner would come together to lay the groundwork and define the attitude and formula of the genre. And yeah, so that's cyberpunk. Loosely, kind of, mostly, more or less. And with that, ladies and gents, boys and girls, street samurai of all ages, I think I've said mostly what I needed to say in regards to outlining what cyberpunk kind of is in terms of mood and setting and history. Next, we delve into Mike Pondsmith's Cyberpunk tabletop game, Cyberpunk 2020. And hopefully we can figure out what Cyberpunk 2077 has in store for us. So stay tuned for that, and like always, stay frosty.